So, here's some mustard. You can actually just take the flowers. Eat the flowers. They're mustard. They're quite yummy. It's a great little wild edible to eat. Look at all those ladybugs. Oh, those are all ladybugs. I love it. And Kona. These flowers look a lot like mustard, but if you can see, the base of it is actually watercress. And then you can see here's some fever few hiding in here. So really, once you start learning the greens, you can start identifying that there's curly leaf dock sticking out a bunch of the grass. There's watercress here. And even chickweed hiding here. Look at this little chickweed. The Herb Fairies books are a great way for adults and kids alike to learn wild edibles. And chickweed, the whole plant is edible. So it's really yummy. The kids love it. And it's another one of those really amazing little plants that you can just, um, as you're walking, nibble on, get some um, nutrients, helps you stay full. And it's really fun to look for. It's really fun for the kids to know what there is. That's the is wrong one. That's death weed. <laughs> <laughs> He's being funny. He actually doesn't know very many wild edibles. Death weed. So that is a little chickweed patch. You can tell by the ten little petals. So there's actually five petals that are split in two, but there's ten little petals, and that is how you will identify chickweed. We're walking over here because this is wild roses they will get beautiful little pink flowers on them very soon but these little wild roses um, you can make you can take the rose petals and actually make uh, wild rose honey you can make the rose hips and turn them into tea or jam so wild roses um, and I believe if you don't put anything if you treat your roses in your own garden without any pesticides or herbicides or any um, thing and they're completely organic you can also use those but I think you have to wait about I think it's like seven years from using pesticides or herbicides before you want to eat them because they actually stay in their system for that long there is some mugwort right there and there's fever few in here too. There it is. It's hiding down in there. There's watercress. If you can start just seeing, like, there's not just one plant in this hodgepodge, but this is really what is so beautiful about nature. It's not just one thing growing here, but there's wild rose and curly leaf dock and mugwort and wet watercress and fever few. And it's all just in a hodgepodge together, growing so beautifully in what looks like just this huge field of green. But once you start looking at it, you can start identifying how intricate all these little things are. So this tree right over here is willow. That is a willow. You can tell by these little, like, I call them willow caterpillars. I'm actually not quite sure what the real name is for them. Ooh, what'd you find there? Muck. Muck. I love it. Some good muck. Okay, this little doozy right here. We love it. This is pineapple weed. And you know it's pineapple weed because of the shape. It has the same head on it as chamomile. So it has the same head on it as chamomile, and it can actually... <laughs> it can actually <laughs> be used, um, pineapple weed can actually be used in replacement of chamomile tea. Um, and the reason it's called pineapple weed is because if you squeeze or press this little bulb head, the cone of it, it smells like pineapple. Um, this loves like school fields, dry, arid places. You can find it along sidewalks a lot of time, but of course more in the wild is 
when you actually want to pick it and then ingest it. So, um, but this can be eaten as well. It's pretty potent, but um, pineapple weed is safe yeah, to maybe. eat. Um, and it's also delicious in a tea. This is miner's lettuce. And miner's lettuce grows pretty rampant up here. And it got its name from the miners or the loggers. Another one that you can just chomp away on. 